prisoners at Lane County Jail in Eugene, Oregon, are on their fifth consecutive week of a hunger strike. The strikers are demanding adequate protective measures for COVID-19, the release of pretrial and medically vulnerable detainees, the protection of the constitutional right to a fair and speedy trial, and the reinstatement of in-person religious services and social visits safely behind glass. There are 2.3 million people incarcerated in U.S. jails, prisons, detention centers, and other correctional facilities. They are five and a half times more likely to contract COVID-19 and three times more likely to die from it, according to a report from Johns Hopkins and UCLA. Positive cases of the virus among incarcerated people in the state of Oregon has doubled in the last week. The strike organizers have estimated that upwards of 15 to 20 inmates have participated in the strike. But it's hard for them to get the exact number as inmates are kept apart from each other in 20 different dorms and communication is severely restricted. Since the start of the strike, conditions at the jail have continued to deteriorate. One of the inmate organizers has been on strike for over 30 days consecutively and was told he has irreversible liver and kidney damage. Organizers from Lane County Mutual Aid have coordinated noise demonstrations, teach-ins, marches, letter-writing campaigns, and press conferences to bring attention and support for the strikers. They've also organized phone and email zaps to put pressure on state and county officials to meet these demands. I spoke with the incarcerated strike leaders on the conditions that led to this strike, their demands, and what is needed most to protect incarcerated people at this time. The fact that the people that are striking about George Floyd, the conditions in the jail itself, the food, and the fact that overall we need prison reform and it needs to be changed. Officers absolutely were refusing to wear masks. Um, it was just a huge amount of, and then the same token, where they were not doing anything to protect us from COVID-19. At the same token, they were using COVID-19 to stop a bunch of our rights. They were using COVID-19 to say that we couldn't have religious services. They were using COVID-19 to say that we could not meet face to face with our attorneys, which is making it, I mean, honestly, I'm taking a plea deal within the next couple of days and going to prison. And I probably wouldn't be doing this without that. And everybody shows their participation in the strike in different ways. We've had some people who joined the strike for a couple days at a time just to show the support for the cause. And we've had some people that have stayed on for more of the duration. I really just feel like the powers at the, uh, meaning the judge, the protocol, the jail, stuff like that, uh, really just don't care about us or the situation. Uh, I was asked, uh, I would talk to Malcolm Health by one of the deputies, and I said that I would. And at the end of the conversation, as rude as it was, the medical health professional told me, she said, you should probably just get used to the fact that you're going to die before you reach your trial. Breakthrough called Lane County Jail for comment, and they hung up. Uh, they say they have me under medical observation as protection. Um, I made an agreement with the medical staff here that if I was able to take a meal on one of the mornings that she would wait till Friday. Well, the very next day they rolled me up as soon as I got more people involved and brought me down to, you know, medic, uh, medical segregation down here. Um, they claim it's because, you know, they're protecting me from COVID, which is baloney. Um, perhaps the deputies don't even really wear masks or gloves. Most of the medical staff doesn't wear masks or gloves. I have seen a recent change in that. Um, probably closer to three quarters of them are wearing it. Um, but once again, I mean, being locked down in a cold cell with light on 24 hours a day feels like retaliation to me. I had a frivolous write-up given to me um, for supposedly standing on a sink. The, the, the stuff doesn't even make sense. They accused me of refusing the direct orders and standing on a sink. And they locked me down for a month. I, I feel like they're being manipulative. They try to keep us divided. I mean, it's, it's more of a divide and conquer. If you turn around and get one person away or a couple of people away that are protesting or doing hunger strikes, you separate them and you tell yourself, well, oh, this person is eating now or this person. So 
they figure if they deceive us and okay, they break us up and you turn around and say, Well, this person is eating now, you doing it because of this person, you don't have to because they're no longer doing this. Like they've given church services back. But they've given church services back to only a few people in the jail, the uh the privileged dorm. And it, that's not the way this works. It's constitutional right that we have church service. They don't get to pick and choose who gets church services. Like, for instance, they are giving us contact visits with our attorneys have been returned. But it's at their discretion. And that's not the way this works. They don't get to decide when they are breaking and violating constitutional rights and who they're going to keep giving them to. We have, like I said, no advocates, no liaisons that within the system itself for the detainees or the inmates. Everything is governed and run by the jail system itself. So, I mean, with a reform, the inmates would, and the detainees would also have a say. And this is a call for all of us to turn around and understand that we can make a change. I think it's the cooperation of people on the inside and outside that are making things actually possible. People on the inside have the ability to do things that people on the outside don't, like file lawsuits. Since we are actually victims of the situations, we can do things like file lawsuits. But the lawsuits mean nothing without the support from the community. I don't see it changing overnight or within the next month or two. I mean... It's possible anything can change with the right people behind us, the right guidance, the right outlook. Yeah, sure, we can change anything. All we have to do is believe and everybody to band together. Mm -hmm. It can be done.